Okay, so we're set up for the first part of the test. And you can see we have the bird watt meter, the 4410A. And it has this adjustment on here. We'll show you that. But if you take a look down here, we have the 10 kilowatt slug in there. But that's okay given this uh, adapter or this, this adjustment we have here. Here's a BNC coming out and it comes out of here and it runs through into a dummy load. And then here is the radio. We're using the FTDX 101 MP. And I have a CW key set up. And uh, you can see from the screen, it's putting out about five watts. Anyhow, what I wanted to show, and it's gonna mess this up, is, is that here we have all this mess right here. A bunch of adapters connected uh, to get our signal into the bird watt meter. Let's see if we can get that adjusted back. There we go. Okay, what I want to do is I want to come over here and show you on the power settings. Uh, we are at 5 watts power on the radio. And then if I turn this on, the first setting goes to battery. And you can see that the battery is showing that it's strong. And they're various settings. So this is 100. And that is a 100 setting. A 30 setting. And if you come down here, you can see that that is 10, 3, 1.03 and 0.01. So when we use 0.01, that's giving us a 100 watt reading, and we're going to do that on the top scale of this. So let me key up and see what we see. We should see around 5 watts. <clears throat> and it's showing 4. And I'm not 100% sure why it's showing 4, but let's go back over here, turn this up to 10, and see what we're seeing. And it's just under 9 watts. So maybe something's not accurate. Maybe there's some loss in those adapters. Maybe there's some loss in the cable. Uh, or maybe it's just not accurate. So uh, let's go ahead and turn this thing up to 50. So in order to do this, I'm going to turn this to 1. And that's going to give us a 100-watt scale on the top. And you can see it's just under 50. And you can see on the radio, you can see that it says it's putting out 50. So it leads me to believe it's from loss or maybe the bird meter is not accurate. I don't know. Let's go ahead and turn this up to 150. I'm sorry, to 100. So there's 100 watts. And you can see we're almost at 100 watts. We're at 95 plus. So if I turn this to three, what this does is it uses this bottom scale, the one through three scale. And it's almost at 100, so it's just a little bit below there. Let's go up to 150. And it's reading about 140. The meter on the radio is saying 150. And let's go up to 200. And that's reading like 190. It's reading 200 on the radio. All right, so let's get this thing switched out and uh, see how it reads. All right, folks, so today we're taking a look at some bird watt meters. These are two different watt meters. This one is the 4410A, and this is the one we're going to be using for this video. It has a slug. You can see the slug input here. And um, that's where you would put the slug or element, as they're called. Uh, this shows you the frequency and the range that you want to measure on your device. This is just a Bird 43. It's a little bit of an older model. It's uh, banged up a little bit, seen better days, but it works pretty well. And I just wanted to show you a couple of different um, elements. Now, the elements for the 4410A are not compatible with the 43. These are all 43 slugs, but the way we look at them and read them are similar. So these two are made by Bird Manufacturing, and these are made by a company called Cable Dynamics. Um, they're both based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so when you take a look at this one, this is good for measuring up to 5 watts on 25 through 60 megahertz. This one is 250 watts on 100 through 250 megahertz. And that's how you kind of read those. Um, I'll roll in a chart explaining this in a little bit more detail. We just saw in the demo how to use this adjustment, this multiplying factor. So here's a table that I put together that kind of explains how the uh, 
watt meter works with that adjustment setting that we have on there. And that adjustment setting is unique to the 4410A. So when you have it on point 0.1 right here, it's the full scale power factor is 10 watts. Point 0.3, the full scale power factor is 30 watts. On one, the power factor is 100 watts, and we saw that in the test. And then here on three, it's 300 watts. You have to go all the way to 100 to get the full 100% of the uh, power in that, or the, the measurement capability out of that slug, or uh, they have a different name for it. Uh, element is what they call those things. And then here, this tells you what scale to use, zero through one or zero through three. We only went up to three, so we use a zero through three scale to look at a... 300 watt full power scale to look at 200 watts output on the radio. And hopefully that makes sense to everybody. But this is a 10 kilowatt slug that's going on two through 30 megahertz. And I got this for um, measuring HF stuff is what I wanted to do. And I wanted to be able to measure beyond 100 watts. If I just wanted to measure 100 watts, I would just use the bird 43. And I would use this slug, which is two through 30 hundred watts. Now, the challenge or the problem that you get with a bird watt meter is this one came with BNC connectors. And you can see down there that it says bird is an official bird part BNC connector. And that's okay, but when you use that, you have to use adapters to get to the connection type that you're using on your transmission line or coaxial cable. And that could be a little bit of a pain in the butt. My bird 43, I have this adapter on here because this one. came with usb i'm sorry with type n connectors when you take a look at that this is made by bird to this connection plate now what i did is as i was looking at replacement connection plates and i came across these and these are so239 connectors but you can see there is nothing marking them telling you who or where they are manufactured these are from a third mark, third party company, um, aftermarket, and it's not cable dynamics, but this company is also in Cleveland, Ohio. So I wonder what's going on in Cleveland that they do a bunch of this stuff, but you can swap these out and it's really not that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and take a look at how difficult that is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this one out so I can set up an SO239 as the input to my watt meter. I'm going to leave this as BNC because the cable that I'm connecting to my dummy load with is actually a BNC to SO239. So if you take a look at this, you can see it's just Phillips screws on there. And we happen to have a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, the screws are out. Now I want to be really careful when I do this because I don't want to damage the equipment at all. But I'm just going to try to slowly ease this thing out. And boom, it just popped right out. So you can see there is, uh, I don't know, a little slot down there, some little grabby grab thing. And then here's the inside of that. And you can see there's a little bit of a pin inside of there. So I'm just going to take the SO239 and I'm going to, again, be very gentle. And that plugged right on in. So let me go ahead and screw these babies in and then we'll see what happens. Okay, we're done. I'm going to grab a multimeter and I want to do some quick testing. All right, here is a multimeter that I actually like using quite a bit. Let me just turn this on. Let me turn the backlight on. I didn't want to do that. And we should be. There we go. Don't know what was going on there, but uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go to function and I want to go to continuity testing, which is right here. And we get that audible tone when we have continuity. I want to see if we have it from shield to shield. And that's good. And now what I want to do is I want to check and see if we have it from center conductor to center conductor. And we do. So we should be okay to read our measurements. I'm going to set all this back up the way we had it before and we're going to do some quick tests. Okay, so here's what I had in line with the coax that I took out. So this is no longer needed. I wonder if that's going to impact our measurements. Okay, and we're back. <clears throat> and I think that we are set on three. We are. So that would be using the scale from one to three. And I think we're still set on 200 watts. And it's still reading the same around 190. Let me uh, drop this down to 
I think we did 150 watts. And we're just below that a smidge. Let's go down to 100. And it looks like around 95. Now, if I remember correctly, we dropped this to setting one. That should give us full scale on the top. We're just over 95, which is, I think, is where we were. Uh, we went down to 50, right? And that's what we did. And that's pretty close to 50. Um, I think we went down here and we did a 10 watt measurement. And it's reading about nine. And then I think we measured around five watts. And just over four. So that's pretty close to where we were before. I think I'm going to leave it this way because it's a lot cleaner. Like uh, you can see right here. I just, I just have the uh, coax running straight in there. And that's super duper, super duper handy. And uh, I think that's really going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching.